welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. So today I want to talk about inner conversations. I don't think I've ever done a video about it before. To be fair, it's one of my most preferred manifestation methods. I've talked about it on TikTok before that my ex-husband and I used to have a lot of inner conversations just because we were separated, um, like we were long distance and stuff. And I've since had a lot more experiences where Sometimes it took a little while and sometimes it was absolutely instant, which is just crazy. If you like this kind of content, please make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions and let's get into it. I think the easiest way to explain inner conversations is literally like what it says. You're having an inner conversation with somebody. Now, if you are someone who doesn't have, I guess like, I don't know how to say this. It's not an inside voice. It's like a dialogue running in your head. I guess there are people apparently that don't have that when I wouldn't necessarily use that or try to force that as a manifestation method because obviously whatever you're using should be most natural to you and should just come to you in a way where you can implement it in your everyday life. Also, it should be something where you feel like if you are not doing it and you are not keeping track of it, it could potentially mess up your manifestation, which by the way, technically that's not a thing. Like it's more delayed, not really messed up, but I know a lot of people give up and then it's technically messed up. So, but the way like inner conversations work for me, and I can just tell you from my experience is I will be sitting down mostly when I'm like quiet or not doing anything and i will start having first it's a monologue like basically thinking about this person um and what they're doing and being annoyed about it for example and then i kind of start pivoting into what i would say to them if i were to text them right now or if i were to be sitting in front of them and this is different for everybody some people can hear their specific person talk back to them some can't that's really up to you. Um, to me personally, I really benefit from only seeing my POV because oftentimes, even if I text, like I only remember what I said or I will reread what I said. I don't know if that's anxiety or what. I don't really reread what other people say or I leave voice notes and I listen them back to them, my own voice notes. Like I listen to whoever is sending me um, a voice note like once. But then once I send my own, I will like sometimes just listen back to them. I don't know what that is, but that's a really good way to kind of use inner conversations to manifest. Now you can also use inner conversations with a third party. So let's say you have a friend that you always message with or talk to or send voice notes to. You can literally envision what you would say to them, how you would say it to them. You can write it out. You can script it out. You can even record it and listen back to it, like whatever works best for you. But if you are someone who can basically hear their person talk back to you or you can like visualize or envision it, and sometimes it's even just you hearing their voice. You don't have to like see it, see it. You can tell them what it is you really want to tell them and you can also hear them say back to you what it is that you want them to say versus what reality is showing you right now and that's where a lot of people like I think really mess up is when they have time to sit in peace and kind of spiral a little bit because you know okay let's take an example someone has been really mean to you right and you haven't really stood up for yourself because you were afraid to say something but then you're sitting around and kind of affirming like you're such a whatever you know like you're so mean to me i can't believe you're treating me like this like why would you do this i'm so mad at you and you start going into this conversation and a lot of people tend to forget that whatever conversation you have in the 4d reality will translate to the 3d reality the 4d is your present moment in time the 3d is just a past reflection of everything that you've already lived in the 4d reality which is your current moment in time you are having this negative conversation with them in your head technically in real time if you want to speak in those terms so they're gonna get that literally right away and they're gonna reflect on that respond to that and they have to show up in a way that you describe them and you come at them and approach them they have no other choice but to act in a way that you assume that conversation has to go and obviously if you are with somebody who let's say treats you like a queen you wouldn't even consider talking to them in a way that might be a little bit angry or upset and you wouldn't even have to talk to them about things that make you angry and upset because maybe they're just so considerate there's no need for any of this. So inner conversations are really, really helpful and a really great technique to use, but they can also really, really be detrimental to your progress if you are someone who tends to not really watch them as much as you maybe should. And if you are someone who tends to spiral a lot when it comes to internal conversations, because even if you can't hear them necessarily, and you only hear yourself, 
This is oftentimes where I find it happens that you tend to talk yourself into a spiral that wasn't there before. And to me personally, for example, I in the past used to try to counteract that with tarot readings and talking to other people who would then, you know, reflect that back to me negatively. The tarot readings would reflect it back to me negatively. I would even get nightmares sometimes about it. Like it can really just spiral into all kinds of things you don't even consider happening. Maybe there's situations with other people that then reflect that back. So your inner conversation is literally where it starts and ends for most of your manifestations. If you get those in check and you get those in check really, really quickly, your manifestation will come and your 3D reality will start reflecting that immediately. The best way I find to keep them in check is to reprimand yourself. Now, I have a lot of friends who have kids and I always use this example of like, if your child came home from school and they taught them something incorrectly and it would repeat it over and over again, you wouldn't give up and be like, okay, honey, that's fine. Go and learn that incorrectly. I don't care. No, you would correct them until they get it right. And you would have the patience for it, even if you don't have patience in general, but you would stick with it until they get it because you wouldn't want them to go out into the world and learn something incorrectly that could maybe even harm them in the long run. That is literally how you need to treat your brain. And that is literally how you need to treat your brain, especially when it comes to inner conversations, because they can just be so sneaky and derail you so quickly when you should be using them for good. Like take a couple minutes every single day and sit down and kind of, I like to do this when I'm really not sure what I should be affirming for or where my mind is at. I will sit down and I will just let whoever I'm manifesting or whatever I'm manifesting. Remember, even if it's something like money, job, whatever, there's always a person that has to carry it out. So I sometimes, if let's say, for example, I want to manifest money and I want someone to give me money or I want to raise or whatever, but I don't know exactly who was responsible for that. You can just env envision or just put like a black screen on it or a black figure or whatever. Like you're, the universe and your brain will know who to put into that place once it's time. And then just let them come to me and see what it is they say without me interfering, without me saying something first, like just letting basically consciousness flow over you and have them tell you exactly where your subconscious is at. And that will give you a good feedback of, am I where I need to be or do I need to do some work? And if you're getting an unfavorable response, don't freak out. That just means that this is where you are at in this moment in time. And I would suggest you write it down and then turn it into the conversation that you do want and then start to consciously affirm. If they are already having a favorable conversation, but you don't see results, then chances are that your brain is currently fighting itself. So if you are focusing and you're in a good headspace and a good state of mind, your brain is acknowledging that it already has taken hold of that new belief that you've been affirming or scripting or whatever you've been doing. But that there is this like tiny voice, it's almost like the devil and the angel on your shoulder that is still fighting that and your brain is constantly in a battle. So when you are focusing, you're getting the positive story. But when you're not focusing and you're not paying attention, right, that's when usually like, stuff like this happens. The devil is coming in because it, he feels like he has a chance to now like get his hooks in with you and then feed you the negative story. So you're constantly in this like back and forth, right? Like the seesaw is just going up and down when you want the scale to be basically first in the middle, which is when you need to, you get the scale to the middle if you catch your negative feelings and put them right beside the positive ones. And then you need to start tilting it by correcting it every time something comes up where the devil is kind of sneaking in and giving you these negative thoughts. But you really need to correct it first by catching it. Because if you don't catch it, those negative feelings and those negative, sorry, not feelings, I kept saying feelings, like those negative thoughts, obviously, like the feelings are a manifestation of your thoughts. If you're not new here, you know this. But the, the um, thoughts that you have, the negative ones will always be more in power than the positive ones. Because if you don't know that they're happening, they have more power over you. If I know what's going on, I can change it. I'm in control. If I let them slip, then they are in control. And that's when I start to get anxiety and that's when I start to spiral and that's when things start to happen and manifest that I don't want them to happen or I'm doing really good. I've had this example with somebody just recently where they manifested something and they were really proud of themselves and they were doing really good. But even though I didn't say anything, I could see that their self-concept and their negative programming that they had was just being overridden over I don't know they overrode that for a moment but it literally came back like like a bat out of hell and that's when it was really important for that person to say you know what 
I know this is me. I know where this is coming from. So I'm choosing to ignore it this time. I'm not going to give in and do the same thing I'm doing over and over again. I'm going to choose to ignore it. I'm acknowledging it now. I see where it came from. So I'm now going to do something to change it. I really hope this video helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.